Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Elder Brain cast. We are the Elder Brain. With me tonight, we have a, a slimmed down crew. Just me, Ian, and Mike, and Devin are here tonight. Uh, Jack had other commitments, and uh, Craig decided to get sick. So um, we're going to do another round of the quiet year, because we had such fun doing it last time, and Mike felt like he really missed out. So now he gets to give it a whirl. <laughs> Um, do we have any announcements or anything to get through, or can we just dive in? Uh, I mean, I guess we should talk about the fact that tonight was supposed to be our last uh, last stream before our little summer hiatus, because we're all going on vacations and busy mm. on the next coming, the next upcoming Monday. So, I guess yeah. we're on hiatus starting this week mm -hmm. <laughs> from so from Sea of Souls, at least. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll uh, try and get something up every week. But um, what that will be will kind of vary depending on who's available, kind of like this week. Yeah. So um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's just dive right into this. We'll, we'll weigh anchor mateys, ha ha. I don't have a video to, to intro yeah, us Yeah, there's time. no intro to cut to, unfortunately. <laughs> but I know the cue, that's, a, that's important. There you go. All right, so um we have played the quiet year before it is an awesome game i can't recommend it enough we had a lot of fun doing it last time and um let's see how this goes this time it'll be completely different which is awesome so i start with the opening story and i have customized it slightly to make it fit a little bit with with our game world so uh the world of eudora is no stranger to upheaval Tonight's story may be one from her distant past or something from a possible future. Some say it was a fight between factions of dragons. Others say it was a civil war amongst the Titans. Still others claim it was a cosmic struggle between the philosophies of order and chaos themselves. Regardless of the players, and though the war raged long, it is finally over. It's unclear who even won, but the devastating, eh, devastating effects have been felt even in this remote corner of the world. Signs and portents of a coming cataclysm are clear. As has happened so many times before, Eudora is about to renew herself. The survivors and refugees from the conflict are gathering here from all over the world, not to rebuild society, but merely to save what little they can from the coming storm. That is our introduction. So that's the setting, the broad strokes of the setting. Uh, from here, I'm going to introduce some of our tools. So we've got a nice big blank page here. That is our map. Uh, before we start into the game, we're going to establish some landscape. And as we play, we're gonna add stuff to the map. We're gonna be doodling all over this thing and making all sorts of uh, uh, annotations. We won't write words, but we'll, we can use symbols and that's okay. Uh, we all take turns drawing on the map and any drawing is good as you saw last time. <laughs> so <laughs> some of them are better than others. We won't, uh, won't belabor it too much. Um, there's also a turn summary card, which I hope popped up for everyone. It did. And this is in your uh, quick, quick reference folder in your roll 20, Mike, in case you're curious. Okay. Um, turn summary is there. Uh, this just shows the different things that you do on each of your turns. Um, so um, play card, adjust the dice. So play card is you're gonna draw a card from our deck of cards at the bottom here. Uh, adjust the dice, we're doing a little differently because in the physical game, you actually use dice as counters, but since we've got all these nifty com computer tools, we can make projects and use the counters on here. So the green bubble is where we put our counter. So we can add up to six weeks of how long a project is gonna take to complete. Okay. Never have you sounded more like an old man than when you used the term nifty computer tools. I know. <laughs> I am an old man. Give me some slack here. Whippersnapper. Put you over my knee. Hey, I what turn 31 tomorrow. You turn what? 31 tomorrow. Oh, oh you're still a young pup. Yeah. <laughs> man. I got a few years on you yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, uh, we have our own character tokens over here where we're going to track our contempt in the red bubble. Right. So if anything happens during the game that uh, you disagree with, we don't ever argue about things openly. You just show contempt. You just increment your token by one. 
to say, I've disagreed with something that's happened here. It's, it's just a general reading of how well everyone, everyone's getting along and how things are going. So we so don't more, say we disagree. We just, we just tick just, up just, real I'm passive adding, aggressive. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Love it. I um, totally think that's a great idea. <laughs> I roll contempt, contempt, contempt. Why did your red um, line go up? <laughs> down here in the bottom corner, we've got a deck of cards. Um, it's split up into each <clears throat> suit, representing each of the seasons. Uh, we're starting in spring, and we will finish in winter. And the last card to be drawn is the King of Spades. When that is drawn, the game is over. Um, and that's when basically the end of the day, world begins. Day one, winter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so our role when we're playing The Quiet Year, um, we don't control specific characters or act out scenes per se. Um, instead, we're sort of the abstract social forces of the entire community. At any point, it might represent a single person or a faction or a great many people or an object or a force of nature or whatever. Uh, it's a story about the social forces and their impact on the land rather than being about specific people. But we'll get to that too. At the same time, we're also playing as the community. So we're looking for opportunities to introduce new and interesting challenges to the story. We don't want everything to go completely smoothly and the cards will definitely help with that. Um, it's our job to make sure there are always difficult decisions to be made and uncertainties to be explored as we introduce inter interesting challenges for the community and then figure out how to address them. Tensions will emerge that ultimately reveal the character and future of our community. So before we begin the first week of play, we're going to have a general discussion about the landscape. Um, okay. So what kind of terrain do we want to be working in? Last time we did an island. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to do another island or something different? Do you know, coast or a mountaintop or a... The center of the earth. Or the center of the earth. <laughs> Although that wouldn't work for you, Dora. So. Or... That's yeah. <laughs> or a giant cave or like a small cluster of islands or because uh, oh. we, we got all an archipelago, you know, that, that... the back of Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that canon Cthulhu's in Eudora? Mm, maybe Cthulhu. Well, in this era, at least <laughs> this, yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't know. Um, when you initially suggested it, I, I was thinking some kind of mountain range. Mountain that's range. where my brain went. How about, all right, let me go freehand with some black. I'm going to put some nice big mountains right down the middle of our map. The spine of the world. Yeah. Hey. Um, is it going to be completely landlocked? Are we going to have any water nearby? Or actually, wait, hang on. So, mountain range is a so it's a so it's going to be like maybe a, a a plateau in the middle of the mountains. Sure. Bluff. A bluff. Ooh, bluff. Survivor's bluff. <laughs> um. Okay, so we've got our mountain range. Now we're going to go around the horn, and everyone can add one detail to the map. So, if you want to add. Uh, let's see. I've got us Devin at the top of the order. So Devin, pick a terrain detail to add. So that could be uh, body of water, or uh, or our our bluff area, or anything else you can think of. Sort of general terrain feature. Well, if we're playing magic, I'd say now that we got our mountains, let's throw out some plains. <laughs> But I also kind of want to have a big swamp. Ooh. Ooh, nice. That's fun. Let's do a big death swamp. <laughs> I've got Full this feeling this mountain range is going to just completely bisect whatever we work, we work on. <laughs> We're going to have east siders and west siders. <laughs> this is the, guess, uh, the great wall of the world. Mm, Northeasters and southwesters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Devin, why don't you pick a spot for your swamp and uh, Mike, you can decide what you're going to do. Mm. Well, I got to see where Devin puts his swamp. Mm. And how big is the swamp going to be? Oh, Ooh, that's pretty good. 
I'm about to zoom my map out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is a good swamp. I like it. It looked like a swamp. You know what it is to us. Yep. Yes. The, the green blob is definitely the swamp. Yep. <laughs> All righty. You have swamped us up. All right, Mike, what you got for us? So I'm adding a natural feature. Um, it doesn't have to be completely natural, but th this is sort of the uh, the terrain portions. This is uh, yeah, okay. Saying. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Uh, then in that case. Like if you want to put like a ruined city or something like that. Well, that that's that's what I that's where my brain went, Ian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but if it's supposed to be more natural, well, it's just it's the the environment that we're working in. So if the okay. environment includes a ruined city, then by all means, add it. All right. Well, then let's let's contrast the the murky, wet, damp swamp uh, with. Uh, is that not going to work? Really? My tablet doesn't work. No. No, uh, I was going to cheat and draw <laughs> and draw. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to get uh, we're going to get a bit of a desert going on here. On this side. Okay. And uh, I'm thinking inside that desert is like the ruins of an ancient city. Stuck in the Pretty sands. All right. Ruined city in the sand. Swamp and ruins. What else do we need? Think I'm going yeah, to you. cheat a little bit. And I'm going to put, oh, wait a minute. Let me think about this for a second. Because water flows downhill, doesn't it? So I need to put my lake in the mountains in order for it to flow down into the swamp, right? Right. All right, let's get us a nice big mountainside lake with some river leading into the swamp, and maybe even, yeah, that'll do. So we've got a lake in the mountains with a river that feeds into the swamp. Nice, nice. So all you geography purists out there, don't don't at me. <laughs> all right, we have sketched the terrain. Um, oh, we need to pick a. Where is the community going to be set up? Where do you think? Well, you had suggested some sort of a plateau, right? Yeah. So I imagine it would be near water. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking kind of this area near the, to the mouth of the river, head of the swamp kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, for now, let's just put a little X there to remind us where the community is going to be. Um, blah, blah, blah. Starting resources. Okay. So now, um, each of us is going to name an important resource for the community and then decide whether we have abundance of it or scarcity of it. Hmm. Oh, sorry. No, wait. We each pick a, we each name a resource and then we'll decide collectively which ones are abundant and scarce. So, okay. uh, same order. So Devin, what, uh, what is one resource that we've got? The resource that we have, uh, is this so, so so sorry, this is a resource that will be important to the community. I see. Uh, well, considering the fact that we're in the mountains and uh, the only real thing we have here is a swamp, I'd say peat. Okay. Um, Gotta build them homes. All right. So we'll have peat. I'm guessing that's going to be abundant. Um, Mike, what's another resource for our community? Well, uh, seeing as how there's a ruined city just on the other side of the hills, and we're mm -hmm. also adjacent to a mountain, I imagine that we'll have an abundance. Well, I, a, a resource that'll be important to us will be stone. Stone? Okay. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm going to really throw a curveball in here and I'll say another resource that is important to us uh, is going to be magic. Ooh. It's going to be somehow a, a consumable resource is magic. Okay. All right. So between those three, uh, Pete and Stone and magic, um, choose one of those resources to be in abundance and the rest are in scarcity. <laughs> Do we vote on this or does one of us make a suggestion or does Devin go first? Um, we decide collectively. Oh. So well, I think it makes, it's pretty sensitive. Magic is in, is in scarcity. That's yeah. These people want it, they need it, but they don't got it. We, we need another sad wizard hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, between peat and stone, which do you think we have abundance? I guess it depends. Since the, I'm guessing since the community is on the swamp side of the mountains, then mm -hmm. maybe we don't have easy access to the stone. So there's lots of building materials. We don't have a way to get at it. Well, and I, and I would can... say that's the thing. It's like, it's there. We just can't get it. Yeah. And the peat, you can easily grab that off the ground. Exactly. Stone, you gotta like, you gotta pick it out. All right. There's a reason the Vikings used peat in their construction instead of stonework. Uh, and when I spell abundance correctly, then it will also have abundance. There we go. <laughs> All right. So we have an abundance of peat and scarce stone and magic. Very good. Um, ooh, next page. All right, so each week in our year is gonna be a turn taken by one player. So, so each of your turns represents a week. Uh, you draw a card. Uh, we should be shooting for a couple of, just two or three minutes per turn. So it goes fairly quickly once we start rolling. Mm -hmm. um, and your turn basically goes, you draw a card, activate, do whatever it says on the card. And then we uh, decrement all the projects by one week as things are getting completed. And then you can take one of those three actions of discover something new, hold a discussion or start a project. Mm. Uh, so play a card is really, it's just draw the card, read what it says and do what it says. Uh, if it specifies that you start a project that is independent of your taken action. So you might on your turn, start two projects, one from the card and one from your action. Um, again, adjust the dice is pretty straightforward. We just, when every project is made, we set, we determine how long it's going to take. And when that reaches zero, it completes. The person whose project it was um, gets to tell everyone how it turned out. And then we'll update the map accordingly. Um, yes, don't adjust new projects. It's just the old projects that go down. A completed project is usually successful. It doesn't mean that the whole community is happy with what happened, but a completed project will do something. Mm -hmm. um, and then the three different actions, discover something new. Um, this is introducing a new situation, a problem, an opportunity, a crisis-tunity, you know, one of those good, could be both kind of situations. Uh, draw it on the map, make it simple, small, and sort of a quick sketch under 30 seconds they recommend. Uh, whenever things seem too controlled and easy, this is what this is when you throw in a curveball and say, "Okay, uh, I found a thing, or this happens, or you know, stuff happens that that the cards are being too nice to us, so I'll be mean instead." Uh, second action is called hold a discussion, uh, and this is the only time that we're really supposed to be interacting, sort of in character as the community. Mm. Um, and there's. You can either make an open-ended, or sorry, discussion that results in a decision being made. Everyone, everyone just sort of says their piece and then that's it. Um, yes, this is how conversations work in communities. They are untidy and inconclusive affairs. Uh, each of us only gets to say one or two sentences as part of the dis discussion. Um, and as the one starting the discussion, you can either uh, open with a statement and that's sort of your bit, or you can pose a question to the group. Mm. So you can say, what are we going to do about the incoming barbarians versus I think we should attack the incoming barbarians. <laughs> if you say, I think we should attack, 
that's your turn, then the other two get to say the bit discussion over. If you pose the question, then you also get to contribute to the discussion. Pretty straightforward. And the last one is start a project. Um, and this is choose a situation and declare what the community is going to do to resolve it. Um, and again, there's no debate about this. You're just saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we will, as a group, decide how long it should take to resolve this thing between one and six weeks. We'll drop a token on the board to represent it. And when it completes, then we'll, uh, then we'll draw it on. Um, there's some examples there. Contempt tokens we've talked about, abundance and scarcity. At the beginning of the game, we'll have one resource in abundance, the rest of it are in scarcity. We can add or subtract to these lists whenever we feel it's appropriate to do. So if we find new resources, we can add them to our abundances, or if we run out of something, we can add it to scarcities. Um, perhaps we could start a project to find more stuff and then give ourselves an abundance, or we could uh, have a project go bad and create a scarcity. Yeah. I will be updating that as we, as we do it. Um, the other thing that I will be keeping track of is uh, our discoveries and any notable figures that come up along the way. So it'll be sort of a running tally of who and what we are doing. Um, and that is about it. And I think I won't throw you completely in the deep end, Mike. We'll let Devin draw the first card <laughs> to show you what's done, and you can go second. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Oh, actually, first, before you draw, Devin, I need to strip off the top five cards because we are playing the accelerated version. So yes, please. Deal out five cards to me. All right, take it away. All right, draw. Draw one card. Look at the card. Queen of Hearts. What's the most beautiful thing in this area or what is the most hideous thing in this area? Mm. Hmm. I'd say the most hideous thing is that carved into the rock face of one of the mountains is a giant uh, stone carved head of a goblin. Mm. <laughs> How, are we talking like Mount Rushmore sized? Or yes. Like... <laughs> awesome. And maybe it's hollow. Ooh. Which uh, which that. relative of Flick is this goblin? <laughs> that is the question, isn't it? Oh boy, I'm gonna have to consult my notes. <laughs> I don't even know where to put this. Let's say let's put it uh, right here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, very nice. nice. So oh. then. All right, so you've played you your cards to adjust. Okay, so take your action. Discover something new, hold the discussion, or start the project. Well, seeing as we've just arrived here and we're going to need uh, stuff, I think the first thing to do is to build shelter. Always a good start. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should point out, Mike, that uh, the game says that the community is approximately 60 to 80 people, just to give okay. an idea of the, the, the size of group. Size of of it. All right. Okay. Okay. How many weeks do we think it's going to take to... Uh, are we building yeah. crappy shelter or are we building good shelter? Well, if we have peat and and if we have some level of lumber, um, we should be able to build pretty decent construction. So like peat huts in yeah. two weeks? Maybe, maybe a Trelleborg. Ooh. If you can spell it, you can put it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think maybe we'll do three weeks and then we'll throw a Trelleborg in there. Perfect. Can you edit the token? Yeah. Yeah, good. Take it away. There we go. I mean, I'd have no way to confirm if you spelled that right or wrong, so. <laughs> Put it at three. Oh, I see, yeah, no. Well, there we go, three of six, we count down. Okay. All right, um, then your turn's done. All right, Hooray. so Mike. All right, I'm so... winning. <laughs> <laughs> I play a card, so we're gonna. 
click to draw, drag to deal. So I'm just going to click. And then drag it onto the. Oh, I see. Yep. Uh, should it be telling me something? Um, now, in your quick reference, yep. if you look into, under spring hearts. Just oh, I see, I see, I see. Hearts. Okay. All right, so the 10 of hearts is what I've got. So there's another community somewhere on the map. Ooh. Where are they? What uh -oh. sets them apart from you? Or what belief or practice helps unify helps to unify your community? Hmm. Well, uh, I think the other community, where are they? I believe that they are going to be, let's say, let's see where they're going to be maybe a nasty red clan. And they are on the northern side of our water here. And where are they? What sets them apart from you? Uh, let's see. Um, what sets them apart from us is maybe that they are holding, they, they are holding that which we desire the most. They have magic in abundance. Oh, very nice. It's a so, bunch of wizards. <laughs> it's a bunch of wizards. Talon would be very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> so draw a bunch of... Draw a wizard hat there. Draw a, bunch, do draw a bunch of snooty old men. Yeah, little wizard hat there. So they've got magic and abundance. Ivory towers. Mm -hmm. And of course, obligatory star has to go on there. Mm -hmm. There we go. They're all wearing bathrobes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right so, you've drawn a card. So there's no uh -huh. dice to adjust. I'm assuming dice will come up at some point. No, the, that is, uh, so Devin's project will go down from three to two. Oh, that's the dice. Okay. Yeah, we're, dice. We're, we're doing that instead of a D6. We're just I seven. see, I see. Yeah. Uh, and then take an action. So uh, I think that um, because we're building huts and we're realizing that we, we could use some more tools, I think we're going to send out an expedition to investigate more around the lake and see if there's perhaps something there that can help us with crafting tools. All right, so I guess the difference between a discover something, so this is another project, then you're spending a, an exploratory expedition? Yeah. Hopefully for finding tools, but who knows what they're gonna find. All right, so you yes. drag a, a new project token onto the map. Okay. From the materials, and then edit the label and we'll figure out how, how long an expedition do you want this to be? Is this a quick thing or are they going to be thorough? Uh, I think they'll be relatively quick because the town is new. They don't want to be gone for too long. So, so I'll call that a week. Just a week. Just take a quick glance around the lake and try to discover what's going on there. Perfect. You're doing that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And your turn is done. I draw the nine of hearts. Nine of hearts is a charismatic young girl convinces many to help her with an elaborate scheme. What is it who joins her endeavors? Start a project to reflect. Or a charismatic young girl tries to tempt many into sinful or dangerous activity. Why does she do this? How does the community respond? <sighs> oh boy. An elaborate scheme. We're gonna capture Sandy Claus. <laughs> <laughs> um she thinks that the goblin head on the cliff is the perfect thing to ward off uh, would-be invaders. Mm. So she wants to set up a garrison up there. Uh, a garrison. Com complete with like uh, light shows and megaphones and the whole thing to make it into sort of a, a, a haunted head. Oh. I want to set it up. I want to set up a garrison. <laughs> and she has managed to convince a number of people that this... Uh, uh, Haunting of the Goblin Head. Haunted. Goblin. I saw this in a movie once. Um, 
fairly elaborate, but we don't have a lot of tool. Like she's got big ideas, but we don't have anything to implement it with, but mm. it'll take a couple of weeks to do what they can with her haunted goblin. <laughs> All right. Love it. Um, one week left on the Trelleborg and the exploration project already finishes. So what is the results of the exploration, Mike? Uh, so I, I, I could just come up with anything. Yeah, it, it resolves somehow. It resolves somehow. Can it resolve in a discovery? Um, yeah. Like yeah. If, if, you, if they found what they're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, they come back into town and they have all of these makeshift stone tools, some pickaxes and some axes that they've found at, uh, some kind of other ruin on the side of the lake that they didn't previously know was there. Ooh. All right. So I'm going to add a discovery that uh, the explorers found another ruin on the on the west side of the lake. Yeah. Why don't you draw something in there for us? But I should also add that there is another set of lake. Does the no exploration one. for tools marker stay on the map or? I uh, know we just get rid of it. Okay. Um, did they, and they did find tools as well. They, I did. Guess. they did find some, some old makeshift stone uh, pickaxes <coughs> and axes. All right. So, stone age tools. Exactly. Uh, some tools. Okay, good. All right, so that was resolving your project. I've done my card, so now I need to do a thing. I think I'm going to have a... Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to make a discovery. And this discovery is that there is, in fact, a network of tunnels. Oh, connected to the goblin head and they seem to connect not only within the mountains but also head towards the uh the ruined city in the desert very nice very nice oh that is too big a line get rid of that let's make this a small line now there's a network of tunnels in the mountains All right, and that is my turn. So we're back up to Devin. Hooray, I'm going to draw a card. What do I hit, removed? Um, we hit... Was uh, click if, I try, if I try to draw, it says that there's no more cards left, which is not correct. <laughs> um, should be, let's just uh, click on the deck, I think it is. Oh. That work. What's going on? Nothing happens when you click on it, Devin? No, it's not doing anything. Steal one card to you. What? I have the option to do removed and draw. Try to draw from a deck with no more cards. What? Spring's over. Yes. <laughs> well... What the heck? So there should be 
five more cards in there. Oh, I wonder. If it already removed five and I had removed five and didn't shuffle them back in, maybe. That's frustrating. Well, let's see what cards would be left. Um two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Two, four, six, seven, eight. All right, let's do a slash roll 1d5, and we'll give you a thing. All right. <laughs> Three. Uh, two, four, six of hearts. The six of hearts. Are there children in the community? If there are, what is their role in the community? Or how old are the eldest members of the community and what unique needs do they have? <laughs> there are children. Um, and I would say that their role is to... Aside from bring joy to all of the older <laughs> folks by simply existing, I would say that they um, they have to use their uh, tiny hands to compact the peat mm. in some of the more uh, awkward spots when building the various shelters. Or putting them to work is what you're saying. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Very good. But it's but you see they turn it into a game. Mm. Of course, as children do. As the uh, work continues on the haunted goblin head, mm. there is signs of a fairly recent encampment made within a uh, hollowed out area of the tunnels. Ooh. And signs of the fact that it's quite possible goblins themselves have been living there. Oh, recently, mm. very recently. But is that your discovery? That's the discovery. Okay. Oh, we didn't. Uh... Trelleborgs are done. Trelleborgs are done. Okay. And the go goblin head. Goblin head now goes down. One week left. I shall draw Trelleborg as we now have a circular. Fortress of peat and wood. Very good. And signs of recent goblin occupation in the tunnels. All right, and that is your turn. All right, so it was two, four. Two, four, seven, eight. Now I will roll one d four. One. So I get two of hearts. Okay. Two of hearts says there's a large body of water on the map. Where is it? What does it look like? Or there's a giant man-made structure on the map. Where is it? Why is it abandoned? <laughs> mm, interesting. Well, you got an easy job. <laughs> um, I think there is going to be a prominent building in the desert ruins. Mm. And it's going to stand out because it is... Purple. Oh. And it is a purple pyramid. In a purple pyramid. Okay. A purple pyramid. <laughs> there we go. There's a purple pyramid, and it is. Definitely the people working on the Haunted Goblin Head have, have spotted that now, since we've got a good, better vantage point. And I guess we, oh, the Haunted Goblin Head project completes. Hey. Um, 
they're feeling pretty happy about it. There is now, it's basically like a, a reward for the kids to go work the haunted goblin head. If they've done a good job building the, the peat houses that week, then they get to go get to do a shift up in the haunted house and make the noises and wave the torches and stay up late at night to, to make sure that it looks super occupied. Um, and a la home alone one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, per the uh, uh, tiger repelling rock, we've had no invasions, therefore it must be working. <laughs> um, all right, so the haunted goblin head project. So Manning, the haunted goblin head is now a reward for the kids. All right, so that was completing that. I've drawn my card, I get to do a thing. Um, we've got no projects, I need to make a project. Um, gosh, I think, okay, I'm gonna remove the X that is our initial community marker because now we've got a much better community there. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone is going to get super ambitious <clears throat> and they want to uh, cause they read a book or know a guy or were formerly a farmer and know that draining, damming and draining swamps and then growing food in it is apparently a thing that people do. So they're going to try and drain the swamp literally <laughs> and um, for for uh agriculture purposes but again we've got stone age tools and not a lot of know-how here so i'm gonna say that it's going to be a long and arduous project mm. full six weeks to drain the swamp for agriculture or a portion of these drain the swamp And that is my turn. Okay. So does that leave me with three options? Yes. Okay. Did I skip your turn? I did. I totally skipped your turn. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So it's slash roll 1d3, right? Yes. Okay. I think we are at, let's see, the four, the six, or the no, four, seven, or eight. Okay. So I got two. So that's a seven. Yep. Okay, so seven of hearts says, where does everyone sleep? Who is unhappy with this arrangement and why? Or what natural predators roam this area and are you safe? Ooh. I mean, we already know where everybody sleeps, but are they happy with that arrangement? Or predators? I think predators are more fun. It gives an obstacle. Um... What natural predators roam this area? I mean, goblin would be the easy one, but I think we need to go with something a little bit more potentially menacing. <laughs> so you know what? We're draining the swamp, and we're finding that there are a lot of gators. In the swamp. <laughs> a lot of gators in their swamps. <laughs> Are we safe? As long as we're inside the Trelleborg, we're safe. But when we go out to do the work, we are not safe. Uh, so I guess that uh, that will. So draining the swamp takes another week off, right? Yes. Adjusting the dice there, um, and then let's see. Discover something new. Well, we discovered gators. Uh, you know what? Let's continue the theme here. We keep finding stuff. Uh, in places that we go to, I think we find some kind of structure at the bottom of the swamp as we're draining. It starts to poke its little tower head out. Ooh. And this is like, it's underwater, but it is not, it is not weathered in any way, shape, or form. Flying, maybe a little bit of magic. Ooh. So is it like a hatch or a structure or? I think it's it's like a structure that is sunken down into the swamp, but it itself remains intact. 
All right. And so like so. we're just seeing the top of, of, a, of a tower poking out as we drain the swamp. That'll be fun. <laughs> All right. So we should go back up to Devon at this point. Hooray! <laughs> so you are either the four or the eight. One. So that is the four of hearts. For our arts, what important and basic tools does the community lack? Or where are you storing food and why is this a risky place to store things? Storing food in the goblin head. Because <laughs> it's dry. I was going to say it's elevated mm -hmm. and, and chilled. Makes a lot of sense. Except for the fact that there are likely goblins stealing it. Mm -hmm. Food stores are in the goblin head. Dryness and coolness, if not security. They're good. No. Right. Uh, uh, we need a new project. We don't have enough of those going on. We should have a bajillion projects. Count down the timer. Drain the swamp has four weeks left. And yeah, start a new project. Scour the goblin head and ensure that the food stores are in fact safe. Ooh, security of the goblin head. Sounds like a band name. <laughs> I think that should only, how, how, how many tunnels are we thinking are, are, are in this thing? Into the head itself, there's probably just the one way in and out, but then it connects to a network pretty close thereafter. So, yeah. so single and point of like, entry, but if, you know, future, like securing that entry would be easy, but there's going to be multiple. So if we, if we maybe say like a two week project to get the, uh, the entryway secure and also just to kind of do a quick excursion out and check the set, set a perimeter, basically set a perimeter. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right and now i'll do mike give you your proper turn in order okay. so you get the last draw for and the I eight parts all right let's see here eight an old piece of machinery is discovered broken but perhaps repairable what is it what would it be useful for or an old piece of machinery is discovered cursed and dangerous how does the community destroy it mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Cursed and dangerous or useful and we have to repair it. Old piece of machinery. Give me some ideas. What would an old piece of machinery be like in this world? I'm trying to think. Like, like would a windmill be an old piece of machinery or are we talking something more sophisticated than that? You could go steampunk. You could go... Oh. Magi Crash technology. spaceship, you could go. Uh, spaceship. The barrier peaks. Yeah. <laughs> We've been in the barrier peaks this whole time. Statue of Liberty. Damn <laughs> <laughs> you all to hell. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, man. That's a tough one. Uh, an old piece of machinery. We're gonna go. Let's go. Kind of. Let's go steampunk. Uh, yeah. We'll go. We'll go. Kind of. There's old ruined city over there. So you know what? Uh, this is gonna be an old cursed train engine. Oh, I mind. like it. It's not an ancient Mayan colander. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is some kind of old ancient train engine. That's what I'm going with. I love it. It is cursed in that uh, uh, it's got skeletons that are animated and coming out of it. Okay, there we oh, go. Well. <laughs> hey. That's pretty cursed. That's pretty cursed and dangerous. 
So it's got like hostile skeletons. And uh, how does the community destroy it? Dinamite. Uh, Sorry. Run it into the swamp. Well, that's that. <laughs> feed it to the alligators. <laughs> Let the gators take care of it. Let the gators take care of it. I think the easiest thing, yeah, would probably be to try to coax it into the swamp and gum up its gears with peat and gross water and gator bits. Cool. All right, I guess draw a train engine crashed into the swamp now. Because <laughs> that'll be easy to draw. Yep, that will take me a minute. Uh, <laughs> Good thing so Mike's be the, the swamp. Yeah, you know, I can't use my tablet. That's the problem. Mm, can't there's... cheat. Consider this a challenge. <laughs> a challenge. And then we smoke coming out of the engine. Uh, right. But it's sinking in the water. Glub, glub. Glub, glub. <laughs> it thought it could, but it couldn't. <laughs> uh, all right. So all of the projects come a week closer to completion. Yep. So Goblin, here, I'll work on those while you uh, figure out your action. I think... I think it's time we had a discussion. Ooh. Uh, they can so either uh, pose a question or make a declaration. If you pose a question, then you get to join in, or you can make a declaration and we can respond. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to make a declaration. All right. We need... Of independence. <laughs> <laughs> we need more magic, and those guys up north have what we need. This vault. <laughs> um, I get the feeling there is a uh, possibly even that same charismatic uh, woman who started the Goblin Slayer project or the uh, the the uh, haunted Goblin head. Um, a, a diplomatic solution would be uh, appropriate. We'll send a, a, an envoy to meet with them. A peacekeeping envoy. Mm hmm. <laughs> Devin, what do you have to say? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think uh, let's try asking first. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, give the give the um, give the peacekeepers um, something to offer. Um, Ooh, apply them with gifts of peat. Information of this purple pyramid. Ooh, hmm. that might intrigue them. That might be intel. Wizards like to know about weird colored things in strange places. All right. <laughs> that was our uh, discussion then. And slash or the train. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there anything special about finishing a season? I uh, don't think so. I think we just plow right into... Uh... It's too hot now. <laughs> um, yeah I think we just uh, let me uh, recall all the cards yeah okay that's what happened okay so those are all recalled now I'll get rid of our helpful marker text and now can I Hide that deck. I can. And I need to pull out the summer deck. Shuffle. And now this one I need to be careful because I need to make sure that the King of Diamonds is removed. Now I'm going to deal five cards to myself. And if I get the King of Diamonds, I did not. I then recall them and try again. This time I'll shuffle and deal myself five more cards until I get the king of diamonds and do it again. I'm right, being too lucky. <laughs> shuffle and deal cards. Eventually. Okay, I got the king of diamonds that time. All right, king of diamonds is out. Mike went last, so I guess I get to go first this time. 
Just before you start, we're not going to run into the same issue that we had the last season? I With the five don't... cards in your hand? Uh, so we're playing a shorter game. Yep. So I'm pulling out five cards at the beginning. And I hope that I've done it correctly now so that okay. I've reshuffled. And there should be eight cards remaining now. Okay. I hope. Click to draw. <laughs> So I start with the Three of Diamonds. Oh, a new season to look at in the Oracle. Three of Diamonds says, summer is a time for production and tending to the earth. Start a project related to food production. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> or summer is a time for conquest and the gathering of might. Start a project related to military readiness and conquest. Well, seeing as we already have drained the swamp on the go, we are going to i think we are going to more formalize our militia at this point um so it's going to now that we have fortified the position inside the goblin head um mm -hmm. It is no longer a suitable reward for the children. <laughs> and we are going to now actually have our goblin guard. And we are mm. going to select a few of our hardiest uh, community members to head up this new goblin guard and start training other people. Um, I don't know, how long should it take to, to get a militia ready to to it depends. Do you want a good militia or a bad militia? <laughs> Two weeks it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hang on a second. I have a little, a little birdie in my ear. One moment. All right. Um, the Goblin Guard are a thing. We will put them up near the Goblin Flare. So that'll be sort of the headquarters of our militia. It's the Goblin Head. Um, discussion, guarding, on that Magic user north and haunted train yes. so, let's swamp. and now the goblin guard is our new militia. All right, so that was my card. And now we will, ooh, Goblin Slayer finishes. Good timing on that. <laughs> and during this right. two weeks. So Devin, what, what, does the, uh, what are the results of securing our perimeter? Well, they do manage to get some wooden palisades put in place. Um, the problem, of course, is that, uh, is palisade the right word? Starts with an A, the word I'm thinking of. Anyway, they managed to get a couple of them put in place. Um, and they do actually catch a goblin that was sneaking around trying to grab food from the stores. They have captured him. They do not know what to do with him. But it is probably only a matter of time before the rest of his kin make a rescue attempt. Concerted mm. effort to get in. Mm. All right. I don't know how you're going to draw that, but... Uh... <laughs> uh, I will notice in the official annals that um, the goblin is secured and a goblin scout is taken prisoner.
And while you're drawing that, oh, this is still my turn. I get to do a thing. Well, we talked about it. I think I'm going to plop down a new project. It's gonna take, shouldn't take longer than a week to send out our emissaries to the, uh, the magic users. Mm. Um, because yeah, we don't really have a good idea of scale here, but I'm figuring it's not too far away, right? Each pixel is 10 miles. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Maybe it'll take two weeks then. <laughs> All right, I will plot that there, and my turn is done, and Devin can draw a card. Hooray. The seven of diamonds. All right, I'll put that up here for you. Introduce a mystery at the edge of the map, or an unattended situation becomes problematic and scary. What is it? How does it go right? A giant blue beam emits from the top of the purple pyramid. Ooh. Oh, sky lasers are always bad news. Oh. <laughs> Certainly that will uh, catch the eye of the wizards. <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Maybe our intel is arriving too late. Mm -hmm. big voice, and a big voice echoes out, the origination project to begin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was your card. Now we decrement all of these. Goblin Guard has one more week. Drain the Swamp has one more week. These are all my projects. What the heck? <laughs> and the emissaries are done already. Um, well, I'll, I can I can always throw in another project. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, let me let me resolve the emissaries real fast while you're thinking of that. Okay. Um, the emissaries. This the sky laser happened before the emissaries arrived. So the intel they were coming uh, with an offering is now old news. Um, saying that we know the origin of it is from the purple pyramid does not seem to impress the magic users. And they seem to already know about this. And the emissaries come back empty handed, mm. rebuffed by the magic users. So I'm going to signify this with, oop, that is extra large. I want I want that. That user's now unhappy with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I think we, uh, I think it's about time we'll be again excavating the wreckage mm. of the train. Ooh. <laughs> Let's say maybe three weeks of that. Yeah, it's that's. Right in the spot where you're pumping all the extra drain the swamp yeah. goo. So all right. All right, you've made a project. Um, then it is Mike's turn to draw a card. All righty. I get, oh, I get the 10 of diamonds. So let's see, the 10 of diamonds. You discover a cache of supplies or resources, add a new abundance, or a scarcity has gone unaddressed for too long. Start a project that will alleviate that scarcity. <laughs> Kill the mages. Kill the mages. War on magic. <laughs> 
Um, well, I mean, the first thing that came to mind was that we have unearthed more of this tower in the swamp, but I don't want to just like keep doing the things that are all mine. No, that's that's but that's yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah. Uh, so I am going to introduce. Oh wait, uh, we find a cache of magic resources. And that is nice. going to become an abundance for us. We find it in the uh, the tower that was poking out. We find an entrance and get in there and we find, I don't know, all sorts of scrolls and potions and books and other magic stuff. So is it was it just a trove of items or is it like a bigger structure as well? It is a bigger structure, okay. but it will take some time to, like, let's say it's flooded. So we've got to dig our way down to get any further. But at the top, we do find an abundance of magic stuff. Cool. So that's right. my card. So I so will uh, change our scarcity of magic to an abundance. And I will note that in the annal. That and we... I will paint the tower blue and give it a little uh, yellow star. I did not know how to spell structure. STR. There we go. Swamp. Contains a throw of magic. Also. Okay. Count the projects down. Oh boy. So. Goblin Guard complete. We now have a militia hey. based in the Goblin Hit. I will just freehand some. Uh, field. Shape. And sword. Shape. Nope. Goblin Guard are now stationed. Nice. Uh, drain the Swamp finishes as well. Big project. Big project. That was a big project. We now have farmland, which is wild. I will draw. Let's grow some cucumbers. <laughs> I'll draw a nice big yellow rectangle with more yellow rectangles in it. Show that we are growing stuff. Or, you know what? Do it like this. So, you know, there. There we go. Farmer's fields. And maybe even some little yellow crappies in there. <laughs> Just little things start. Oh, maybe a little green sprouts. There we go. Beep, beep. Wow. My kids are real quiet if you guys can hear that. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We got some fields in the swamp. All right, so that was my project finishing. Um, now, Mike, you get to do your action. All right. We've got our farm. We're excavating wreckage. The emissaries have come back with bad news, but we have found ourselves an abundance of magic. I think we need to have a discussion about what we do with those jerks up to the north. Ooh. Turned us away. Turn, turned away our goodwill offering. We have a militia. We have magic. I think we go knock on their door. Some aggressive negotiation? Oh. <laughs> yes. Um... Could we 
redirect the goblin threat in their direction. <laughs> right? If we make ourselves look scary enough, maybe the goblins will go uh, bug them instead. Hey. I like that. I think that's fine. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that was our discussion on uh, what to do with the, with those jerks in the north. Yep. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, that was Mike's turn. I get to draw another card. It is the nine of diamonds. Hey. Nine of diamonds says a project fails. Which one and why? Or something goes foul and supplies are ruined at a new scarcity. Oh, boy <laughs> well we've only got one project on the go and i don't want to torpedo that so i guess we uh have something go okay it's been a hot summer mm. a very hot summer to the point that um our abundance of peat is no longer abundance because the swamp is starting to dry out everywhere <laughs> So peat is now in scarcity. We've harvested all the good stuff and the new stuff is not growing in. We're not doing proper uh, 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 resource management here. Uh -oh. We drained the swamp and the peat dried up. We don't know yeah, what I happened. Know. <laughs> Who could have foreseen this? <laughs> all right. That was my card. Excavate the wreckage goes down to one more week. And I am going to add a new project. I'm going to code name this Operation Goblin Go. <laughs> and it's going to be doing our damnedest to hopefully route them through the, the existing tunnels and just sort of tell the goblins to go bug the wizards. Um, I think it's going to be um, it's going to be a, a longer term kind of thing where we're going to mm. do like strategic blocking of tunnels as well as you know baiting them with food or supplies or whatever we can do to just coax them towards the wizards. So I'm going to put that in the mountains because we're going to hopefully use the tunnels to get them go up there. And that's my turn. Devin's up. Alrighty. Give me my card. What's my card? It's the Ace of Diamonds. Ooh. A contingent within the community demand to be heard. Who are they and what are they asking for? Or a contingent within the community have acted on their frustration. Aha! <laughs> what have they damaged? And why did they damage it? Is it permanent? Well, you see some folk just got a little carried away with the whole magic thing. And, um, well, they may have uh, decided to go take a look at that there purple pyramid. Mm. And uh, they may or may not have turned the big blue laser into a big green laser. Oh. <laughs> Uh, that sounds promising. <laughs> and uh, they were they uh, they will say that, well, there was some kind of symbol on the wall. It it was one of a big sun, and now it looks kind of like a moon. Hmm. Corgano, so, I was chasing. Is that the? So I I think we I think we solved the problem, everybody. <laughs> um, and discover something new turns out the goblin had in the cage had befriended a couple of kids and they seem to have broken him out oh, oh <laughs> nice actually before that we uh, decrement the projects and your uh, train excavation finishes oh so how's that resolve? Uh, inside the train, uh, we find that they were delivering something to the Purple Pyramid. Uh, it is a list of instructions. on, uh, Or at least it is a 
it is a uh, not necessarily a manual but it is more of like a, kind of like a rosetta stone kind of artifact that we can use to determine how it works turns mm-hmm. out moon very bad <laughs> shocking that's weird <laughs> um but it's going to take some time to decipher and determine how bad and how to fix it And it might require the help of some uh, tenured wizards oh. in order to decrypt it properly <laughs> at a faster speed. It's my turn. All right. Mm. Then Mike can draw while I annotate. All right, I get the six of diamonds some reason going in behind the 10 of diamonds but the six of diamonds so let's see outsiders arrive in the area why are they a threat how are they vulnerable or outsiders arrive in the area how many how are they greeted Hmm. outsiders let's see they do not know the true true (laughs) <laughs> outsiders arrive in the area why are they a threat how are they vulnerable or they arrive in the area how many and how are they greeted how are they greeted by us hmm oh that's tough uh all right so let's see <clears throat> Um, they are going to be, well, let's go with, um, let's go with the second option. So they arrive in the area. How many, uh, it is another like 30, 40 people looking to create their own kind of settlement. And they're wondering about perhaps borrowing some resources from us. We, on the other hand, are in the midst of a power struggle with the wizards to the north uh deception and scheming struggle with the goblins and now the discovery of all of this green stuff coming out of the pyramid i don't think we have time for these outsiders we turn them away maybe even harshly and they are not happy so we don't have time for you people go away Want me to draw the outsiders? Yes, yeah, sadly weeping as they go back into the wilderness. <laughs> Let's draw them. They can be little. Uh, I don't know. We'll call them blue people. Oh, right. Smurfs. Smurfs. <laughs> Smurfs have white hats, right? Yeah. (laughs) Sure, it's a Smurf. Very poorly drawn Smurf. Uh, All right, so that is my card. Uh, Do any of the projects... No, projects don't complete. But the Goblin Co., did you already bring that one down one? Uh, Nope. 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 So Goblin Co. is... Or Goblin Go, sorry. Operation Goblin Go is now at one. Um, Let's see. I haven't started a project in a while, so probably start a project. Uh, We've got food. We've got Operation Deception. We've got the mystery of the pyramid. I think maybe... Because of the pyramid 
and the wizards knowing about the pyramid and all of that. I think we need easier access to the pyramid. So we are going to start a new project. We are going to dig like a tunnel through the mountains, like a big tunnel through the mountains so that we can get there on flat land instead of having to climb the mountains every time we want Oof, to go. That sounds like a six-weeker. That is going to be a six-weeker <laughs> for sure. I'll call that tunnel through the mountains. I'll put that somewhere where it's still legible. Right there, sure. <laughs> That's going to give us a clear, straight shot to the purple pyramid. So we don't have to waste so much time going through that is the fair. tunnels, the, the little goblin tunnels in the head. And that's All my turn. right. Then I guess it's me. I draw the four of diamonds. Um, the four of diamonds says, the eldest among you dies. What caused the death? Or... The eldest among you is very sick. Caring for them and searching for a cure requires the help of the entire community. Do not reduce project dice this week. Oh. Um, all right. So old man Johnson uh, was this cagey old bastard who was <laughs> really, he was the, the, the mastermind behind operation goblin go mm. he was the one he had dealt with goblins in previous wars or skir skirmishes or border disputes or whatever it he changed every time he told the story oh <laughs> uh but he was he was the one who was really directing the operation and uh he is found uh, green as a goblin one morning. He has apparently been poisoned. Ooh. And that has definitely stymied all of our efforts in the mountains, tunneling through and diverting the goblins. So those mm. projects do not progress as all of our troops are looking after Old Man Johnson. Who is Old now Man Johnson. <laughs> old man johnson where there's even a song about him a song by a cat Weird. <laughs> old man johnson uh the malkin <laughs> <laughs> we'll make him a malkin um malkin um was the mastermind of the operation go and has fallen ill due to poisoning um for my action um oh first of all all right we gotta change our sky laser oh yeah it's now green. Green sky laser. Uh, I'm going to add a discovery that the green sky laser had attracted an airship. Oh. I will draw we're not sure of the intent of this airship but it has definitely been attracted <laughs> uh, we're not even sure of the the uh, owners of it or anything it is just shown up there we go one airship attracted <laughs> by the sky laser that is amazing uh that was my discovery that is my turn and devin should be drawing the last card of the season i 
I am the death of summer. <laughs> the eight of diamonds. Someone tries to take control of the community by force, or a headstrong community member decides to put one of their ideas in motion, start a foolish project. Oh, foolish project. <laughs> <laughs> Which of our projects haven't been foolish, really? That's yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that's not that different, right? I mean, um, it just says someone tries to take control. Them wizards have decided they've had enough of us. <laughs> Ooh. And they have just a week away from Operation Goblin Go. Uh, their leader has come in and uh, effectively taken control of the place. Ooh. Mm. Wow. That is definitely a, a turn of events. Or at least they have they have they are they are taking control of it. Mm. Attempting to usurp control. Yes. I don't think they've succeeded just yet. Um, but they, they have effectively kind of just showed up and been like, yeah, you and what army? <laughs> All right. Um I'm going to start a project to decipher the tablets. Mm. We need to stop that green light. Mm. Okay. Um, I have a feeling that if that green light is still there by the time winter hits, we may have a problem. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, also should decrement the projects. So Tom of the Mountains goes down by one. Operation Goblin Go completes. Old Man Johnson's able to... Uh, pass along enough intel so this is the fun part while the leader of the wizards is trying to to take over our community that leaves them vulnerable Ooh. Mm. and the wizards are overrun by goblins love it and they are now losing supplies hand over fist which of course makes them taking over our vibrant community all the more important to them now that they are losing supplies it's sort of Really puts them on their heels. Yep. So maybe the not the best timing of this, but it is what it is. Uh, let's draw a bunch of goblins. Boy, that is really bad. Oh. What thing I'm trying to read? Yeah, that more head shape. There we go. They are being swarmed by goblins in the north. Mm. Goblins in the north. <laughs> OGG seeds and Goblins swarm the northern camp. Leave them there. Take over an hour. Settlement all the more urgent. So a mixed success there. And that is the end of summer. Uh, that's, hey! good timing. that's good timing. We're halfway through the year. Why don't we um, take a break here? So we'll pause for a moment. We'll refresh our beverages and uh, come back anew in about five minutes. And we'll see what autumn and winter have to bring. So we'll be back shortly. <laughs>
great axe and yep. see how they fare. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see if I can draw an orc here. So far, so good. Yeah, that's mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm. I'm with We're you. gonna give him big eyes because why not? And little nose, and then a head. This is terrible. This has gone downhill real quick. <laughs> but they got those tusks. So there we go. There's our orcs. There are thirteen of them. So I'll just I'll just mark that down. Mm -hmm. Thirteen left. Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, let's see. What weapons do they carry? They've got great big axes. Beautiful. Like double sided axes. All right. Big two handers. Oh, projects are going to complete, so I'll just quickly do our bookkeeping while you're finishing your orc. So the column progresses, deciphering the tablet silly. progresses. <laughs> oh, they don't have ears. That's why they look weird. I was like, why do their heads look so strange? They need <laughs> ears. That looks way better. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're marauders, so they've, they've definitely got mohawks. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. faux hawks, That's... maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, so everything else ticked down one? Yep, I got that taken oh, care of. crud. I just clicked on the card by accident. That's okay. I'm sorry. Can I undo that? That's fine. I just know what I'm drawing. You just All right. I'm game. sorry. I've wrecked the game. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Get out, Mike. I yeah. will. I, thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me, everybody. I'll see you later. <laughs> All right. So uh, we've got the airship up there in the desert. We've got the tunnel that's already underway. We're being assaulted by Zug Zug orcs. The goblins are attacking the wizards. The farm is like there's so much stuff going on right now. Um, I do feel like we need another project, though. So... Uh, <laughs> uh oh man so the wizard's taken or is attempting to take over um i'm gonna be the whole the discussion guy i guess okay. I, I i don't know um what new project could we start uh no we're gonna hold the discussion all right. The original community. Forget the wizards. This could be a secret discussion. Ooh, nice. Are you uh, asking a question or making a declaration? <laughs> I am going to ask a question. All right. Should we try to befriend the Zug Zug orcs to help us fend off the wizards? Do we know enough about their motivations to befriend them? Is I'm going to answer a question with a question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is my contribution. Devin, what do you have to say? Dabu. <laughs> work, work. <laughs> you had me at Zug Zug. <laughs> <laughs> I think my con is that your contribution, Devin? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I think my contribution will be there's only 13 of them. Once we get rid of the wizards, we can deal with the orcs. Interesting. Use the orcs to kill the wizards. Yeah. All right. I better note this in the annals that we held a discussion. Held a discussion about the new threat of a rotting band of 13 orcs. No resolution because that's not how discussions work. <laughs> All right. We've discussed the orcs. We've decorated the things. It is now my turn. Hey, look, I drew the ace of, ace of clubs. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Comedy. All right. Ace of Clubs says the community becomes obsessed with a single project. Which one? Why choose one? They decide to take more time to ensure that it is perfect at three weeks. 
or they drop everything else to work on it and all other projects fail. <laughs> oh boy. If there are no projects underway out of scarcity, we do have projects, that's fine. So I'm either adding three weeks or I'm forcing all other projects to fail. Well, we only have one other project, Decipher the Tablets. I think what's going to happen is um, the tunnel through the mountains. Um, we're now realizing that we can utilize a lot of the existing tunnels to do this. Mm. But in order to make it work properly and based on, you know, the work that we did with, with excavating the train, it's like, why, why have just a tunnel when we can have a rapid transit system instead? Ooh. So it's going from tunnel to subway system, Oh, which is going to add another three weeks to the project. So it's now seven weeks of six. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's what's going to happen. I guess I will now decrement all the projects. So it goes down to six weeks. So go team. <laughs> and well, 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 well. Am I going to make a discovery at a project or hold a discussion? Um, you know what? I think our, our charismatic female leader is again, mm. not deterred from her previous failures, uh, is going to try another, uh, diplomatic mission this time, trying to contact the airship. Oh, so they are going to head to the Purple Pyramid in hopes of contacting the airship. Uh, the fact that the tunnel through the mountains isn't done yet says the travel time is going to be a, a, a factor in this. Um, so man, I'm going to put it at three weeks. I'm picturing that girl on Independence Day that's standing on the top of the building with the sign before mm. she gets blown up. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is diplomacy with the airship. Put that over there next to the pyramid. And I'm done. Devin, draw a card. Alrighty. I draw the 10 of clubs. Harvest is here and plentiful. Add an abundance for. Cold autumn winds drive out your enemies. Remove a threat. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. The cold winds cascade their way through the uh, through the oh yeah, okay. uh, through the camp. A couple of wizards look at each other. They're wearing very thin robes. They're old people. <laughs> They look at the huge orcs coming in. Just let them freeze to death and they leave. They don't want to deal with the cold winds. They're going to go back to their magically enhanced location where everything is the perfect temperature. <laughs> all they gotta and do overrun is with goblins. I was going to say, all they got to do is swat away some goblins. <laughs> yeah, swat away the goblins, sit back in their high tower sipping on warm beverages in a nice air-controlled climate. <laughs> I wonder what the martial classes are doing these days. <laughs> oh, that's a great it's still the funniest freaking thing Jack's ever done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, now then. All right. Um, okay, so we get to improve some of these things that have been going on. All right. So, uh, do some bookkeeping here. So airships is down to two, tunnels down to five, and decipher is down to three. 
So I guess we should start a project to uh, befriend the orcs. I don't think that'll take very long to do. What do you think? It'll either work or it won't. It, yeah. That's what I mean. Like one, I think that's a one, oh, week, one week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not be unalived by the zug zug. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great title. <laughs> oh man. All right. Okay. I will play a card. I get the queen of clubs. The queen of clubs says disease spreads through the community. Choose oh, no. one. Oh, there's no or here. So I get to choose one of these. You spend the week quarantining and treating the disease. Project dice are not re reduced this week. Uh, or nobody knows what to do about it. Add health and fertility as a scarcity. Ooh. Hmm. That's, uh, okay. I mean, the sensible thing would be to quarantine and treat the disease, but are our people smart enough to do that? Uh... I I wonder if maybe our community has too much on the go. They're too busy thinking about the airship and the zug zugs and the tablets and the tunnel to take care of themselves. Can we please go to Craig and ask him if orcs in Eudora are just called zug zugs? <laughs> <laughs> well, in this era, they are. See, that's the beauty of this. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm going to go with the second option. I think our people are too busy with their individual projects to stop and take care of themselves. So we're going to add health and fertility as a scarcity. Health and fertility. Yep. No scarcities. Okay. Because nobody knows what to do when they all get sick. Or nobody cares to do what is right when they all get sick. Uh, we'll adjust the dice as well. Airship is down to one. Tunnel is down to four. The cipher is down to two. And Devin, your uh, diplomacy with the orcs is at zero. Yes. How does that go? Half of the orcs believe that having uh, some weaker pink fleshes to assist them would be nice. The other want to just continue raiding. It <laughs> breaks out into a civil war and all the orcs kill each other, thus ending the problem. All right. Oh, that's good. Maybe one survives because that's, that's, otherwise it's an uneven number. All right. So diplomacy with the orcs. Spurs a civil war, leaving one survivor. It's not easy being green. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really easy. We just do this. <laughs> <laughs> one zug zug. One zug zug. And one zug zug is not a threat. No. <laughs> nope. 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 All right, All right, so that so resolved dice. your project. Um, so now, Mike, what are you uh, doing? So am I discovering something new or am I starting a project? Um, so we got a bunch of stuff discovered. The airship is interesting, but that's going to resolve next turn. Um. Deciphering the tablets. Uh, let's uh, let's just start a new project, and that new project is going to be <laughs> um, yeah, we've got our militia, we've got our goblin plan. Mm -hmm. it's time to, I think it's time to attack. 
Ooh. Stop doing the wrong thing. What is... There we go. Okay. I was clicking the wrong thing. <laughs> We're going to add project. Attack the wizards. Now, like any good military leader, we're going to expect this to be a short campaign. <laughs> but it's not going to be short. We're going to call this one... This one's going to be a six-weeker. Ooh. That's going to take some time. That might not ever finish. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Depending on how fast winter goes. Like, last time we finished winter in three draws, it was so fast. <laughs> All right. That's my turn. Beautiful. Uh, I draw the Jack Clubs. The Jack Club says a project finishes early. Which one and why? If there are no projects underway. Uh, but that's it is not a decisive case. victory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a project finishes early. <laughs> The attack on the wizards goes flawlessly. Wow. <laughs> However, Ooh. the reason that it goes flawlessly is because they were caught out of position finishing up a project of their own. Ooh. And they have effectively, um, oops, they have dammed off the water supply. So we caught them more or less on our doorstep, Ooh. erecting a dam. So they were busy fabricating this thing, and we were able to murderize all of them. <laughs> but they finished their dam in the process. So now we've got this dam in place. So our water supply is 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 controlled by this dam, which, you know, might work out for us in the long run. So I got to resolve your wizards thing. Yep. Love it. <laughs> Fun. Um, now I get to decorate the projects. So I will put the tunnels now at three weeks. It is actually nearing completion. Mm -hmm. Decipher tablets is down to one more week and diplomacy with the airship completes um the airship is another group of refugees they are fleeing the conflict and they are um so tired of running <laughs> everything they 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 report that everything behind them is just waste there is nothing left. We are the first people they have encountered that are even close to remaining civilized rather than just descending to barbarism and madness. <laughs> uh, they are... have no idea what the sky laser is, but it's what attracted them here. They figured there must be some civilization here and they're a little crestfallen and crushed that it's more ruins and, and people scrabbling to get by. Um, but they are willing to stick around for now because we're the best thing going that they've found. So I guess what I'll do is, uh, if I can select it all, I'll move the airship down with us. Um, so that resolved. <laughs> And now I get to do a uh, project or discovery. I think uh, real easy project um, is figure out how to use the dam so that we can control our water supply and you know do proper irrigation and everything and actually turn it to our benefit. Smart. Um, having killed all the wizards, you don't have a lot of smart guys left though. So this is going to take a while. <laughs> I'll give us, uh, again, I'm, Seem to be picking three weeks, three weeks to figure out the dam. <laughs> that seems to be my magic number. Figure out the dam. Right there. And that is my turn. 
So that puts us up to Devin's turn. Hooray. I draw my card. It is the three of clubs. Someone leaves the community after issuing a dire warning. Who and what? Or someone issues a dire warning and the community leaps into action to avoid disaster. Start a contentious project that relates to it. Hmm. I think. Ooh. <laughs> so many options here. Having uh, taken over the wizard settlement, they managed to uh, take many of the spell books and uh, a couple of the researchers who have been looking into the magic that they've managed to find, uh, looking through these texts, managed to find the missing piece of the puzzle for deciphering the tablets pulled from the wreckage of the train a little mm -hmm. bit before everybody else did. And once he realized what was happening and what was about to be done, he basically screamed that they're all doomed, they're all fools, and he left immediately. Oh. Mm -hmm. Taking as much as he could. Hmm. That doesn't bode well. No. All right. All right. So, and I think we're going to, does that mean the Decipher Tablets is now finished? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, as it happens, the uh, green of the purple pyramid does not, it kind of means go. Blue meant it was in sort of a, uh, a like stationary standby. standby mode, and it appears that they activated it. And uh, this is a device intended to be used after a cataclysm and what it effectively does is hyperstasis everything within a certain mile radius um, to be preserved so that the uh, life that were to be spawned after the cataclysm can effectively pull information and knowledge and resources out of mm -hmm. the things that existed at pre-cataclysm. Mm. And it is imminently about to effectively uh, sort of Carbonite, everybody. Faces bomb the entire area. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it appears that once the process has begun, uh, the only way to stop it is to uh, enter a very specific series of very complicated steps. And you basically have to trick it into... Um, thinking that they that like you have to basically you have to change its clock mm. to if to a different time to trick Ooh, it into the clock That's yeah, a... yeah yeah uh, which is a much more complicated process than just performing a factory reset or something like that um, <laughs> you've been playing enough will, animal crossing that you uh... and that will have to be done but uh they're honestly not sure if it's going to be done in time as this is going to be a six-week project Ooh. Yeah. As we are two weeks from the end of autumn, that is going to be tight. <laughs> well, that's why that guy ran away. Yep. Nope, nope I get it. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. All right, Mike. Okay, draw a card. I got the eight of clubs. Uh, so let's see. Someone sabotages the project. The project <laughs> fails as a result. Who did this and why? Or 
someone is caught trying to sabotage the efforts of the community, how does the community respond? Oh boy. <laughs> well timed that one. Yeah. Um <clears throat> Hmm. Uh, okay. So they're caught trying to sabotage or they do sabotage. Um. I mean, we have two other projects going as well. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. I'm trying to think of motivations to stop the other two projects. But I mean, if there's some kind of doomsdayer in the community who wants the end of the world. Hmm. <laughs> Um. All right, we're gonna go that route, but he's caught in the process. So, fanatical Frank is trying <laughs> to stop the uh, stopping of the stasis field, but is caught uh, in the process of trying to fiddle with the devices that are setting up the time. Uh, the community responds fairly harshly. They will. There's one Zug Zug orc left. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. They're gonna put the saboteur into the ring with the orc. If oh he my. dies, if he lives, he will gain his freedom. He can flee. If not, their problem solved. If he dies, he dies. If he dies, he dies. That will be what happens. So. If, uh, Fanatical Frank tries to sabotage the stopping of the Doomsday Clock. They catch him. He's got to go mono e mono versus the Zug Zug for his life. Uh, we'll bring down all the projects. He's sentenced to Mortal Kombat. So He's sentenced to Mortal Kombat. Zug That's right. Zug. That is how it is noted in the annals. The other theme song for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was your card. That was my card. Um, I guess we adjust the dice. Just the dice. I'll get those for you, and you can figure out your. Uh... Um. So, go. with many of our threats being taken care of, the goblins, the wizards, the orcs, the gators, and <laughs> a certified amount of people going after the doomsday, I think it's time that we started a project in trying to settle our airship companions or our airship uh folks oh nice so, so integrate them to, yeah we're going to integrate the people of the sky and i think that will be a fairly quick process we'll build them homes similar to ours that'll be a two-week project nice yeah and that's my turn all right and the King of Clubs is the last of autumn. King of Clubs says, a natural disaster strikes the area. Choose one. <clears throat> Focus on getting everyone to safety, remove an abundance, and a, and a project fails. Or you focus on protecting your supplies and hard work at any cost. Several people die. Oh, boy. What our, our current abundances are, magic. We kind of need that. Was that our only abundance left? That's our only abundance left. Oh. Remove an abundance and a project fails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So let me do three of these. Natural disaster strikes the area. Okay. Flash flood, the dam bursts. 
<laughs> yeah, that's totally what it is. So the figure out the dam project is no longer necessary because the dam is no longer there. Hmm. Torrential rains, flash flood, dam breaks. Um, and the magic that was holding it, that was used to construct it, seems to deconstruct magic items on its way through. Ooh. And disenchants everything that is downstream, including the stuff that is in our settlement. Oh, boy. And we are now oh boy. scarce on the magic. <laughs> We're fully scarce of everything that we need. All yeah. the magic left is all the people trying to stop the stasis. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was my card. <laughs> um, the tunnel completes, however. Mike, hey. please describe the completion of the tunnel project. Well, I I kind of like to think that as they were digging this tunnel, there were people on the other side. And so they were digging, 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 and they finally meet. The oh, there's, there's like a handshake moment. Oh, in the yeah, there's there's a moment. Somebody pulls out a rock and they can you see You son of a bitch. And they reach <laughs> their hands through and they shake each other's hands. And it's a wonderful moment. And then the floodwaters come in and start <laughs> to drown the people on the settlement side. And they're like picking and picking. Get it done. Get it done. But uh, I think that's how a few of the settlers die is in the in the mm. tunnels that's being flooded. But the tunnel is completed. They now have a nice quick path through the mountains to get to the purple uh, purple pyramid. Nice. Um. Tunnel through the purple pyramid completes well, rapid transit to the stasis project, which is probably kind of important at this point. All right, that is the end of autumn. Oh boy. So now we are going into winter. Um, and again, I'm going to deal five cards out and I need to make sure that I do not deal out the king of, oops, what? Again, let's shuffle and then deal myself five cards. I have to make sure I don't deal the king of spades. And of course, I dealt King of Spades. So I'll recall those. And then I'll shuffle. And I'll try it again. This time, I'm going to deal myself the King of Spades five times in a row. Watch this. <laughs> All right, no King of Spades in my hand. We are good to go. So as soon as the King of Spades is drawn, the game is over. Okay. And we will do some 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 final thoughts afterwards. But be warned that the end is nigh. We are. <laughs> At most eight draws away from the ending. Okay. And Mike, you drew last. Is that correct? Uh, didn't you draw last? It was yeah. It was it was your turn, Ian. Oh, it was my turn. Oh, I didn't do a thing. Yeah, we never. You never did a project, or a... I didn't do a project. I need to do a project. Yeah, we finished with my with the right. We finished. resolved the tunnel, and then I didn't finish my turn. <laughs> hmm. Um. I'm going to have a discovery. When the dam breaks and the water level in the, in the lake lowers, there is something hidden in the lake as well. Um, it is going to be... Um, what is it going to be? It is going to be a habitat. Ooh. It looks like it is like domed, like bubbled habitat mm. under the water. It could be another community. We don't know it, but all we can see is that there are there are bubbles and domes Ooh. under the lake. It's a Huygen. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Oh, All right. So oh, now oh. it is Devin's turn for the first draw of the winter. While I draw my bubbles in the lake. Victory or death. The king of spades. Seriously? All right. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Well, that was fast. <laughs> The okay. uh, the green light expands outwards in a big flash, and everything is frozen solid. Just All rip right. that off. <laughs> we doomed the dirigible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So at the end. Um, we're going to go around the horn one more time. Um, if there's anything that you would like to resolve, any sort of last sort of bits of, of, of lore or anything else you want to throw out, now's the time to do it. So uh, it was Devin's turn, so why don't you start? The folks trying desperately in the Purple Pyramid to enact the ritual start to realize that they're running out of time. They are desperate and they begin to uh, pull all nighters. But what they didn't see coming was that the guardian of the pyramid would arrive to ensure that the final uh, days of the uh, activation were to go through. And before their astonished eyes flew nothing other than a one eyed, one horde flying purple people eater. <laughs> Wonderful. The screams that emanated from the pyramid of that night were chilling and haunting. And shortly afterwards, there was only green. <laughs> Which turned purple. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. Uh, Mike, any right. any uh, resolutions or wrap ups for you? Uh, I'll offer I'll offer two two quick ones. Uh, uh, Fanatical Frank actually wins the battle against the Zug Zug Orc. <laughs> oh, nice! Takes him down with a good stone to the temple, uh, and flees. He doesn't go far. He actually manages to sneak his way on to the airship, uh, awaiting for them to depart. And my second little bit of lore, I think, is that as the people are trying to integrate with the people of the sky, they realize that all hope is lost. They can see the green cloud starting to go away. And the airship is able to take off with all the people on the ground staying behind as a way to help them get away. So they, in a, in a way, sacrifice themselves to make sure that the people of the sky don't pay the same price that they paid which means that fanatical Frank survives and lives another day. Um, I will add two things to that. Uh, the Zug Zug Orc also is rescued by the airship. <laughs> and he and Frank become almost like a buddy cop comedy roommates. <laughs> um so yeah zug zug is definitely on the airship as well as it escapes the, the 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 green wave um the other thing is as the green wave uh passes over this newly discovered uh, habitat of bubble domes um the people uh you see uh, uh, um it is like fish people that are living inside these things. So it's like, it's like aquatic elves or that sort of thing. Mm. And sort of the last image of them is just them pressed against the glasses going. <laughs> they had no idea any of this was coming. They were happily living <laughs> under their lake, oblivious to the goings on in the outside world. <laughs> and the stasis wave comes and locks us all this chaos gets locked down for eternity. Only one survivor 
remained. And it was the crazy guy running, screaming that they're all foolish and it's never going to work. <laughs> and, I'm getting, and I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> As he takes, he leaps dramatically as behind him is nothing but everything sealed in a crystalline glass-like encasing. <laughs> he turns around and he goes, oh, I told him they was crazy for staying there. <laughs> turns around and falls off a cliff. Of course, of course, yes. <laughs> and that's apparently the end of our game. <laughs> so whether this was something that happened in the far distant past of Eudora or something that is yet to come. We're unclear on this. We'll leave that up to the lore master Craig mm. where to integrate these particular elements into the, into the, the, the history or future of Eudora. But um, thank you to everyone who stuck around and, and watched us be foolish and draw silly pictures. Um. As we said at the top, uh, we are in a hiatus for the next month or so. We'll be uh, putting the main game on pause and we'll be doing smaller sessions like this with whoever is available on that particular week. So do tune in next week for something else that's going to happen <laughs> that we haven't determined yet. Um, until then, uh, happy gaming with whatever game you're playing. and. Um, We'll see you next Monday. Bye.